Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's good to see you. Um, Yah's the greatest. It's been a good week, hopefully, for y'all. Uh, the work week is behind us, and we can rest today and celebrate Yahuwah in our lives. So it's just a joy to be with you all. <clears throat> Ruth isn't with us today. We, she had a couple of families she had to tend to and take care of, so she's busy. Um, but she'll be with us next week. So praise Yah. And I thank you all for her, and I thank you all for all of you. Um, do you remember we talked last week about Psalm 23, Jehelam 23, and up? No matter what you're going through, if you got a valley to go through, Yah will meet you there, so you don't have to worry. And so I want to sing that little song. <clears throat> There'll be peace in the valley. Let there be peace in the valley. Let there be peace in the valley, in the valley of life. Let there be peace in the valley. Let there be peace, peace for life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Yah's given us his peace. And we have his peace. And if he's with us and his peace is with us, we don't need anything else. Hallelujah. Um, he is so great, so good. Um, I wish I, I could interact with you and you could tell me how your weeks were, how your week was. And uh, But um, just know you're always welcome here on the little um, synagogue in the woods, the wilderness in Bowman, South Carolina. Uh, we meet every Shabbat except the last Shabbat of the month, which will um, be the 27th this month. And we call it Stay at Home Shabbat, Stay in Place Shabbat. And we just have Shabbat with our families or friends in our homes. But um, we're glad to be with you this Shabbat. Hallelujah. Okay. I wanted to remind you that um, Rosh Hashanah Elul will happen next weekend. Uh, Havdalah night, the 27th into the 28th, will be Rosh Kadesh Elul. And so... Um, that means that there's only 30 days left before Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and then nine days after that is Yom Kippur on the 10th of Tishrei, and then on the 15th to the 22nd, 23rd, will be Sukkot. So when Elul begins, we really have to start preparing. Um, and, uh, and the first step in your preparing is, is really um, to get ready for these feast days, check it out, see what the dates are, um, uh, plan ahead, get those days off from work because uh, Sukkot, the first and the eighth day, Yom Kippur, the 10th of Tishrei, and Yom Teru are all high set apart days that no work, um, only rest and only rejoicing. So you have to have them off from work. Find out those dates, get your clothes ready to celebrate, uh, make sure your whites are clean and ready to go. Uh, uh, we don't have a celebration here this year, but I'm sure that you'll have one where you live and take the family out and celebrate. We wanna begin with a prayer. Thank you, Yah, for this week of goodness, provision, kindness, all that you did for all of us and our families and friends, keeping us all safe, getting us all to and fro. We thank you so much. And let your words come forth this day, Yahweh, so that we can all learn something from you, from your words, from your commands, and from our um, obedience to them. We thank you, Yah, so much. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah, now and forever. Hallelujah. And we want to pray for the children. So gather the children around <clears throat> and pray for them at home, you moms and dads and aunts and uncles, grandmas, grandpas, uh, whoever you are over the children. And we're going to all pray for all the children of the world. So we're all going to pray for the children. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Yahuwah, our Elohim, sovereign of the universe. We thank you, Yah, for all the children. What a blessing they are to us. Thank you, Yah, for the responsibility that we have to take care of them. As they're growing up, we have no greater responsibility than teaching them, helping them, providing for them, and you let us really care for them. 
So we really thank you, Yah, for the children. Uh, and when we um, get older, they'll take care of us, and they'll be the ones in charge of doing things in them, making things go forth for your name. Hallelujah. So may you bless all the boys like Ephraim and Manasseh. So be it. May you bless all the girls like Sarah, Rivka, Leah, and Rachel. So be it. So be it. Thank you, Yahuwah, for the children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah. Bless all your children, all the children of the world. Hallelujah. Um, we want to do, I want to do the um, commands, of course, and we're just going to do that from Deuteronomy to Deuteronomy 5. Since we're in the book of Deuteronomy, we'll do it from there. Usually read from Shemot or Exodus chapter 20, but we're right here and let's do them together. And this begins at verse 6 of chapter 5 of Deuteronomy. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to naught, for Yahuwah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Guard the Sabbath day to set it apart as Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded you. Six days you labor and shall do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yahuwah, your Elohim. You do not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who's within your gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahuwah blessed the seventh day and set it apart. Whoops, I did that from memory. <laughs> That's from um, uh, Simone, sorry. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yahuwah Yahuwah. You do not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter, nor your male servant nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your sojourner who's within your gates, so that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Mitzrayim, and that Yahuwah Yahuwah brought you out from there with a strong hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded you to perform the Sabbath day. Respect your father and your mother as Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded you so that your days are prolonged and so that it is well with you on the soil which Yahuwah, your Elohim, has given you. You do not murder. You do not commit adultery. You do not steal. You do not bear false witness against your neighbor. You do not covet your neighbor's wife nor do you desire your neighbor's house, his field, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. Hallelujah. Bless you, Yahweh, the blessed one. Thank you, Yah, for giving us your Torah. Um, and now I want to um, do a little bit of reading from here and there, but mostly in chapter 11 of... Uh, Devarim, Deuteronomy, and, uh, but I want us, we want to do the Shema together, and we're going to do it in parts because we have part of it in chapter 6, and again repeated in chapter um, uh, 11. So let's start up with chapter 6. We know it's 4 through 9, but let's, let's I'm going to read just a little pinch, not all of it. Chapter 6, verse 4 of Deuteronomy, page 193 in the scriptures. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And now I'm going to continue it with uh, 
chapter 11, verse 18 to 21. Verse 18 of chapter 11. Excuse me, just a minute while you find it there. Page 198, if you're following with the scriptures. That's chapter 11, verse 18. And you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your being, and shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontless as frontless between your eyes. And you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them, when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you arise up, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children are increased on the soil of which Yahuwah swore to your forefathers to give them, as the days of the heavens on the earth. I praise Yah. Yah is so great, so good. I just got to turn back to chapter 6 a little. Okay. And um, we all know that um, the verse 5 of 6 says, And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And in the Tanakh it says, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your resources. And I just wanted to speak just a tiny bit about that because it's got some really good footnotes in the Tanakh um, on this. Um, and it says, he is the one and only. And at that time, and even today, Israel, the people of Yah, the Yahudim, are the only people who have Yahuwah as the one and only. Every other religion has somebody else or something else or several of these or a couple of those and you know you throw the dice and see what comes up uh, but uh, even our, our our good friends in christianity it's not just the father but they have the son and the holy spirit and and the virgin mary is a co-redeemer um uh, but the jewish people his people we have only one and he's the one and the only uh, but when the time of the coming of the Messiah, the time of peace in this world, everyone, like Israel, will have the one and only true Elohim, Yahuwah. So that's a great time to look forward to. Everyone will know. Not just us Jewish people and um, people who keep the scriptures and try to follow his ways. Um, a second point I wanted to make is that to love Yahuwah with all your soul, that means your devotion or your love for Yah, you're, you're so willing to do that that you'd give up your very life for him. And uh, to love Yahuwah with all your resources mean your love and devotion for him would could cost you all your resources, all your money, uh, all your assets, everything that you have, all your possessions, you'd love him that much to lose all of that. So it's really, um, I was thinking this week when I was saying the Shema one morning, we love you, yeah, I love you with all my heart, with all my being, with all my might. And sometimes we just say those words, but do we really love Yah with all of our heart, all of our being, giving up our life, and all of our resources, giving up everything we have? Uh, do we love him that much? And this week we hear um, those words again in uh, Devarim 11, and I'll read a couple more too. Um, how to cling to him and to love him. I'm gonna start back with 11, one through four. And you'll hear it now. And this is on page 198 in the scriptures, if you're following the scriptures. The scriptures are that Institute for Research Scripture from South Africa. Um, I think most all of you have have them. This is the 2009 edition, but um, we really like it because it puts Yah's name back in it. I'm sorry it's got the New Testament because we don't, we we're long past using that, um, but it's got his name put back in the Tanakh, in the Torah, the prophets, and the other writings. So we're really glad to have this scriptures um, for now. 
And so we're on 11, verse 1. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, and guard his charge, even his laws and his right rulings and his commands always. And you shall know today, for it is not your children who have not known and who have not seen the discipline of Yahuwah, your Elohim, his greatness, his strong hand, his outstretched arm. Verse 3, and his signs and the works which he did had done in the midst of Mitzrayim to Pharaoh, king of, the, of Egypt, and to all his land, and, the, and that which he had done to the army of Egypt, to their horses and their chariots, when he made the waters of the Sea of Reeds overflow them as they pursued you, and how Yahuwah has destroyed them to this day, and what he had done for you in the wilderness till you came to this place. Um, and what he had done to Dathan and Abraham, the sons of Eliab, son of Reuben, when the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households and their tents and all the living creatures that were in their possession in the midst of all Israel. For your eyes are the eyes that saw all the great work of Yahuwah, which he did. And you shall guard every command which I command you today, so that you are strong and shall go in and possess the land which you are passing over to possess. Verse 9, and to prolong your days in the land which Yahuwah swore to your forefathers, to them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. A land which you are going in to possess is not like the land of Egypt, not like the land of Mitzrayim, from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and watered by foot as a vegetable garden. No. But the land which you are passing over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water from the rain of the heavens, a land which Yahuwah your Elohim looks after. The eyes of Yahuwah your Elohim are always on it from the beginning of the year to the latter end of the year. Verse 13, And it shall be that if you diligently obey my commands, which I command you today, to love Yahuwah your Elohim and to serve him with all your heart and with all your being, then I will, shall give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, and you shall gather in your grain and your new wine and your oil. And I shall give grass in your field for your livestock, and you shall eat and be satisfied. And then we're going to just look. Uh, <clears throat> that was 7 to 15. And I just want to do 22 to 25, and then we'll, we'll stop the reading, we'll talk a bit. Verse 22, for if you diligently guard all these commands which I command you, to do it, to love Yahweh Yahuwah, to walk in all his ways, and to cling to him, then Yahuwah shall drive out all these nations before you, and you shall dispossess greater and stronger nations than you. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads is yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea is your border. No man shall stand against you. Yahuwah, Yahuwah, shall put the dread of you and the fear of you upon all the land where you tread, as he has spoken to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah, for your uh, word, for your Torah, and you've planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Yahuwah giver of the Torah. These words are eternal life to us. When we take your words to heart, when we think on it, when we, just like we say it every day, we say the Shema every day, but to really let those words hit us and meditate on it sometimes, I think um, sometimes we all just need to take a little slow pill or a little slow back or just take time to relax and think. Um, what Yah has for us and what he's doing with us is marvelous. Like the children of Israel, it's our eyes who have seen his mighty works and wonders in our lives, in the lives of others, especially in the lives of those that we pray for. When we pray for people, Yah works miracles for them. And it's just amazing. Um, we have a farmer friend who had a major surgery on Monday. He was out of the hospital on Tuesday. And going into the house to rest. He was supposed to be in the uh, ICU for about three or four days. So Yah is the greatest. He, he's with us. Um, and I, I want to just thank Yah too for all of our um, family 
in Nevada that we were able to see a couple of weeks ago. Uh, be strong and be encouraged. We love you all. And all the people all across the world. Um, we have a wonderful family, the Santiago's in the Philippines and all over the world. Um, we're just so thrilled to know everyone. As Yah brings you um, into our lives and us into your lives, we, we just are so grateful um, for the relationships that he's given us. Yah's the greatest. I just wanted to end with one more thought. Um, oops. Um, <clears throat> Final thought is this. I want you all to be encouraged. Be really encouraged because at this point, when Yah is teaching us at such a great level and degree that everything we read makes sense now and we can incorporate it into our daily lives because it's happening before our eyes. Uh, land, uh, not the land of Mitzrayim, but the land, the Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, in these verses is capitalized. It's capital L. Now, I've got to do some research and maybe talk to a couple other rabbis. What does this land mean? I mean, it's, it's a land that Yah looks over from the beginning of the year to the end. It's not like a vegetable garden like the rest of the world. He supplies this water and what's necessary for it. He gives the grass increase for the cattle and for the uh, other uh, animals that are kosher to eat. And the non-kosher ones that are out there for whatever purpose he has them for. A lot of them are uh, like donkeys are um, for, for work. Horses are for work. Um, you don't eat them. Uh, but he knows everything. And um, he's the greatest. But this is that time when we can really rejoice because... He's opening our eyes and our ears and our hearts to him uh, um, because he's got a message for each of us. He wants each of us to follow him as he's called us to follow him. And with your unique gifts together, we can really change this world. We were, Ruth and I were watching a show <clears throat> and this young man from Chicago, it's called Hope Chicago. And he paid the college tuition for this one preparatory school. Everyone there had their next four years paid for. And <clears throat> I think a city alderman, uh, Miss Jackson, was in on it too. And what she was doing was to make sure each parent from each household in the school was able to go back to college or to pursue college. And we were just shocked. But Yah's doing some amazing work. It just takes one person to start something like that called Hope Chicago. And he hopes, like we hope, that there'll be a Hope Seattle, a Hope Pittsburgh, a Hope Milwaukee, a Hope San Antonio, a Hope New Orleans. Every city, every state, every country will have hope because they'll be taking care of one another. And um, it, it's not just a Jewish notion, but it's reality. The children are our future and education uh, is a great um, leveler on the playing field. That means minority people, people on the outside, people that don't have access to everything just because we're white Americans. Uh, they have access to good jobs, um, a good future when they have the education uh, in their um, resume. So we thank Yah for what he's doing uh, with people. I can't remember the man's name, but um, uh, Janet Jackson was the alderman or official that helped him in Chicago. But um, it's a wonderful thing to see people helping people. And that's what Yah wants us to do. That's why he made us. That's why he gave us particular gifts to help one another. So be encouraged. Yah's got something great for you to do. Do it and do it rejoicingly. Um, we're gonna, we don't have our shofar to blow, but I'm gonna say the final blessing and we'll just say goodbye and Shabbat Shalom, okay? I'm so grateful to Yah, he's so good. Um, don't forget to pray for your families. Pray for your brothers and sisters and cousins and everyone that you know. 
uh, because everyone needs lifting up to, to Yah and remembering. Okay? But not today, just thank Him. Thank Yah today. Yivareka Yahua Vishmireka. May Yahua bless you and guard you. Kenya Hiratzon. Yair Yahua Panavleka Vikuneka. Yahua make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yisai Yahua Panavleka Viasim Naka Sulon. Yahua lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Kenya Hiratzon. So may it be. And we bless the name of Yahuwah now and forever. We'll see you next week. Have a blessed rest of the Shabbat and Shabbat Shalom. We love you. Bye-bye now.